just want to kind of go, we're going to introduce ourselves, um, and then we're just going to go through the slides and do some interactive stuff. So um, I guess first, my name is Devon Jackson. Uh, I am a graduate from Villanova University. Um, I graduated in 2000 with my degree in communication, and I came back and got my master's degree in counseling, um, uh, secondary counseling and relations, guidance counseling. Um, worked for the Philadelphia School Systems for five years, and now I'm here in my third year working in the Student Development Office, doing a whole bunch of things, one of, one of which, or two of which is uh, the Raise the Sunshine program, some of you might be in there, um, and also the, which is the volunteer program, and also the Association for Change and Transformation, which is an organization called ACT, which is most popular for doing the diversity skit. Uh, how many freshmen do we have in here? Any? So you guys remember the Touch of Diversity skit? Um, and hopefully everyone knows that. So that's who I am, and this is my partner. Hello, I'm Hezekiah Lewis. Um, I'm a professor in the communication department. Um, I teach film here. I'm also a filmmaker myself, and um, very excited about this this uh, this process. I guess we did one before. Hello. <laughs> uh, that I don't really know too much about. That Devon keeps reminding me of when I when we were uh, undergrads here. Um, we both went you know went to Villanova together. I played football here. Um, yeah, I was on a football scholarship here and got my first master's in theater, and then. Um, Got my MFA in film director from UCLA Film School, and you know a lot of things that I like to get involved with, a lot of projects that I do, uh, really go positive social change. So dealing with issues like this and themes like this is very important and near and dear to my heart. Um, and this is, uh, and even this session is important because the next project that we're actually doing in the social justice documentary courses that I teach, um, we're actually going to Haiti in the fall break and talking about poverty and. But you never want to kind you want to kind of find different unique you know ways where you're not becoming too preachy um, about the issue of poverty. Um, you know what's you know it's been done before. It's been it's kind of redundant. Why do I care? Um, I don't like to make films that you know are trying to pound something into your head. I want to give the audience a you know a way to kind of discuss issues and discuss something that is unique about the you know the subject matter that we all are near and dear to everybody's heart really. Um, so one of the first questions I want you guys to think about is why do you care? Why should you care? You know, why, why is poverty, why is this issue, why are you here? You know, what's important about, you know, why is it, you know, how is it affecting your life? So uh, when you kind of, you read the description of, you know, what we're talking about today, you know, color of poverty, you know, we want to kind of get to the, you know, the foundation of what that really means. And one term that came up a lot in our conversations was a term called privileged poverty. Um, and what does that mean? So that's kind of what we will start discussing today, but I want to start off with a video uh, that I came across in doing our research, um, and we'll kind of give you a, a you know, foundation of what we actually are going to be talking about today. So enjoy. Video today and get a long, <laughs> had a full, long day of rehearsal. And then one of my hosts actually drove me through some of the neighboring communities um, to take the band members back. And I had no idea, no idea what was in store for me there. And it's funny, I was just eating some of my dried fruit that I brought with me and picking through the pieces that I wanted and what I didn't want. And it occurred to me that all of the children that I saw on the street today, the children that had lighted fires all along the dirt roads just to keep warm, huddled together, no more than four or five, six years old, that the grown men and women that I saw in the streets, burning fires, just sitting along the road with a little pot, cooking whatever little scraps they had found on the street to keep their bellies full. Or the little seven-year-old boy that I saw at the market with no shoes on his feet, lined up in a row with other handicapped people who had lost their legs or their arms and whatever body parts they had outstretched to you just to beg for whatever it is that you would, would be willing to give. That they wouldn't have had a choice in picking through the little nuts and fruits that I just did. And it kills me. 
I don't understand. I don't understand how something like this can happen. I want to take all those little kids home. And they were just so happy that I was American. And then I wanted to just spend a minute with them. They are so happy. They are so beautiful. And dirty and, and ashy as they were. Knowing that they probably had bathed in days. They were so eager just to show me what English they knew. And just to tell me their name. Show me they could count in English. These little huts they call houses where some of them can't even afford to put a roof overhead. It's just too much money. And the men that I see running through the street just to get to work. In the U.S., <laughs> if you didn't have a car or a bus, most of us probably couldn't even be bothered. And many of our poorest class are probably just content to be where they're at. These people run through the streets to get to work, to their menial jobs, cleaning up some crap or picking tobacco or just maybe getting to their little craft section that they have on the street corner to sell you these amazing intricately carved pieces that if they were in Barney's or Saks Fifth Avenue they would go for thousands of dollars when all they want is five bucks <laughs> You know, I think the amazing thing is that I'm not interacting with people who are not capable, don't have the intellect or the understanding of what it is to work hard and to want something greater. These musicians I've been working with, <laughs> They're on the same level as most of the musicians that I've worked with back home that have worked with the, the Janet Jacksons and the Madonnas and the Beyonce's and all of these artists. They're no different. Amazing, amazing musicians. Amazing, amazing young men. Positive, eager to prove themselves. Grateful or any opportunity that they're given. But they've clearly been put in a position where based on the economic structure here and their limited education, they've been set up to fail. <laughs> How jacked up is that? This is going to be a pretty much of a, you know, we're going to kind of, hopefully we can get into a, a deep discussion about, um, you know, some of the issues that, that you kind of seen here and some of the, uh, you know, some of the uh, issues that we'll kind of talk about throughout the, uh, the presentation. So right now we're going to kind of just kind of give you an overview first off about poverty. Uh, we're going to talk about the types of poverty. Uh, we're going to, you know, have a discussion and within, within that discussion there's going to be an activity, uh, you know, that Devon will kind of lead and then uh, we'll have a conclusion. Um, so before we move forward, uh, just talk a little bit about what you saw in that video. One word answers, small phrases. Just throw it out there. What are your impressions? What? I felt like it was a very good video because it shows your honest emotions and you can see like there's no acting at all. Very honest, very, yeah. 
And that's and I'm glad you brought that up because that's one of the reasons. Is, you know, as a filmmaker, of course, I want to get all flashy and show you guys all this, you know, pictures and do all <laughs> these cool transitions. Uh, but I came across this kind of raw kind of video blog about and her video diary. She calls it, and for me, it, it was it was real. You know, it was stripped away. There were no fancy cuts and edits, and you know, the sound was all over the place. But um, you know, it, it's it's coming from the heart. So I think that's that's extremely important that you brought that up. What else? She's overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Okay. She sees the people she's meeting as people and not as others. As people, not as others, not as subjects. Some people call them. Go ahead. What else? I like when people look down, like I can't see them, so I'll, I'll call on you real fast. Go ahead. Um, I guess uh, just kind of like a reality check. Yeah. Reality check. Okay. <clears throat> Good. Good. How about here? What's your name, sir? Will. Will, what'd you see? Um, <coughs> most of the movies couldn't, she didn't complete the organization of Somalia, but she couldn't do what she saw. She didn't know how that would happen. She just couldn't do what they were. Can you, um, if you don't mind, um, kind of elaborating on reality check for me? Uh, I guess just like, I guess, you know, maybe um, her lifestyles are like, you know, uh, not knowing like that there are people out there that, you know, don't have you know, the conditions that you know, a lot of us get to live in. They don't, they don't have like, I guess they're not perfect. They don't. She doesn't, she didn't realize until that, like, until she saw the children that, um, that there are people out there that just who don't get to live, like, the kind of life that we all think we, that we all want to live. Mm -hmm. And it was him, like, to see that, I guess, kind of just brought her, like, I guess, grounded her and realized, you know, how lucky she is. And Um, we want to get into, thank you for that, I appreciate that. Um, so, I guess from now, from what you saw and, and, and I guess leading towards what we're going to talk about, somebody give me the definition or define poverty. What is it? What is poverty? Um, tell me the images that you see. Tell me, uh, just, just what is poverty? Just give me, I want to define poverty. Just tell me what your definition of poverty is, or what you think the definition of poverty is. Yes, sir. A lack of material wealth, okay. Yes, ma'am. Struggle overall, emotionally as well as material. Okay, overall struggle as well as with material things. So there's <coughs> lack, overall struggle. Yes, ma'am. Uh, like fear that you can't provide for your family or loved ones. Okay, fear that you cannot provide and overall lack, struggle. Yes, ma'am. Um, like monotony. Okay. Monotony, fear, struggle, lack. <coughs> Anybody else? Yes. Living below um, average means. <coughs> okay. Living below your average means, ma'am. Results of systemic inequality. <coughs> Results of systemic inequality. Lack, struggle, monotony, fear. Anybody else? Okay. And it's kind of get into what the World Bank, and this is a whole different debate. Uh, so the World Bank's definition of, of what poverty is, uh, you know, just kind of get into it includes low incomes and the inability to acquire the, the basic goods and services necessary for survival with dignity. Poverty also you know, encompasses low levels of health and education, poor access to clean water and sanitation inadequate, you know, physical security, lack of, you know, voice, and insufficient, you know, capacity and, and opportunity to better one's life. Um, and that's one of many definitions of what poverty is. And with the World Bank, that is a, uh, uh, it is an interesting kind of debate on, you know, their kind of involvement with poverty, but that's a whole different topic. But just so we can kind of get a little bit more in detail of, of the type of poverty and kind of give you guys some, some you know, detailed <coughs> definitions, I guess, of what we're going to actually use when we get into our discussion of privileged poverty. Um, go, go ahead to the next slide. 
uh, we're gonna have probably what we talked about, you know, north, you know, northern poverty versus southern poverty. What do I mean by that? What is northern poverty versus southern poverty? What does that mean to you? Um, that there's a different like, set of standards for poverty in the north versus the south. And what do I mean by north and south? We're not talking about the Civil War here, although it is a global Civil War, I want to call it. But uh, what, what are some of the what are some of the northern poverty uh, states or countries? Um, yeah, Europe. And what are some of the southern? South America. South America. Good. Good. So first world versus third world. Uh, you know, the richest countries in the world are you know obviously you know and, and what we gonna I'm kind of kind of show you that you know I guess it would be called the G. Uh, the kind of measurements that they use for this, but the United States, uh, China, Japan, what are the poorest? What are some of the poorest countries? Go ahead. Haiti. Haiti? Okay. What else? Who else? And I'm talking, you know, clumped in the, in the global system, okay? You know, Haiti's one of the poorest in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, what, what are some of the poorest countries? Yeah, get all three. Okay. Uganda. Uganda, okay. What else? Poorest countries. Okay, we have what is Zimbabwe, uh, you know, the, the, the Democratic Republic of, of the Congo and Liberia. Okay, now there's different parameters, different, you know, you kind of go through and do your research and, and find different, uh, you know, different polls and strategies of how they, you know, how they measure this. But this is all measured, go ahead, to the next one. You know, kind of go, you know, all measured by the, uh, the GDP, okay? And that is, you know, somewhat of, you know, what, what, you know, a lot of these kind of business formats and business and, and a lot of these people that actually get into economics and a lot of economists like to use uh, this kind of measurement to really kind of give us a sense of where poverty is really affecting certain areas and, you know, and this is what the World Bank's kind of uh, idea is to go and help these countries and, you know, not really understanding how they are impacting, you know, the, the, the common people in these countries. So. Uh, go to next. So this is just a quick graph to kind of you know give you an idea of you know the work. So um, you know this is really kind of the, this is a quick measurement to kind of show you the, the vast differences between you know the highest to the lowest. Go ahead. Uh, levels of poverty. We call it extreme poverty. What do I mean by extreme poverty? What does extreme poverty mean? Back here. What you think extreme poverty means? Okay, so Skid Row, you know what Skid Row is? No. LA, Los Angeles. You feel like people in Skid Row are on extreme, is living under that extreme poverty? I couldn't say where they went because I, I really don't know. I mean, the, the remainder of it, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. who, can, who can help them out with that? Extreme poverty in Skid Row. Go ahead, go ahead. No. No, her. And you know, just by definition, only in developing countries, okay? Only in developing countries. Meaning when we're already developed. This is this is strictly off definition now, okay? Um, and, and when you kind of think about that idea of what extreme poverty is, that's where I want you to start thinking about the different levels, because we can't do a blanket statement of poverty, okay? There's no way to blanket statement, we, you know, like going back to the theme, the color of poverty. What is this? You know, that's what we're trying to define and that's what we're trying to research today. Um, and that's, that's what this discussion is about. That extreme poverty, just by definition, is only in the developing countries, okay? So that's just kind of keep that. And, and within that extreme poverty, you have rural poverty versus urban poverty, you know? And that's just that kind of same idea of the urban, you know, communities here versus, you know, the kind of rural, you know, communities here. Completely different concept and level and, and statistics when you get out into Haiti and you get out into, you know, these, these other countries in that extreme poverty or that what we call the southern, the southern poverty. Um, and then we have absolute poverty, okay? Um, is a level of poverty which, you know, which, you know, certain minimal standards of living, like nutrition, healthcare, and all that, we can't, they can't even obtain that. So when I go back to that, that idea of, you know, so, you know, Southern versus, you know, Northern, where does the, uh, what does this poverty, the absolute poverty fall under? Southern or Northern? Southern. Good. Why? Uh, can't survive in the third world. Good. Third world country, right? So go to the next one. All right, and, and relative poverty, where does that fall in? Probably the first. 
So that's that. Now we get into like the skid row folks and all that good stuff. So good stuff. It's all bad, but we'll get into that in a little bit. But this kind of gives you a map here to kind of give you an idea of the differences, you know, the, the kind of gray areas of those that live. And this is percentage of population living under $1 per day, okay? That's the percentage. So you get into, you know, kind of like those southern areas, you get into Africa, I mean, you have 61 to 80% living on $1 a day, you know, could you imagine? Um, that's just that alone. I'm, you know, once we get into the discussion, I'll give you a little bit of my personal uh, experiences in Ghana and uh, some, uh, you know, some other countries that I've, that I've traveled uh, through film. Uh, global poverty facts, pretty cool facts that you want to have, uh, the one dollar challenge, okay? Uh, more than one billion people live on less than one dollar a day. More than two billion live, you know, on less than two dollars a day, right? Uh, check your assumptions. Americans believe that, the, you know, the government spends 24% of the federal budget to aid, you know, poor countries, but actually the figures are less than one percent. Next one. Uh, you know, and you talk about, you, you, know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's cute thing, so you guys kind of read it as, it's gonna get smaller as you go, but these are really cool facts. We don't have a lot of time, I wanna do a history lesson here, but I really wanna get to the discussion. But these are really cool facts to kind of look at. One more. One more. <laughs> One more. All right. Uh, so these, these are really cool facts to look at. And if you want to, you know, look up, you know, kind of, you know, research the World Bank and uh, also the, the One Campaign is also another good site to go uh, to kind of go to to kind of get you an idea of what, you know, what they are doing to try to eradicate or, and, and really just eliminate that, that sense of poverty, that, uh, that idea of poverty. And, you know, there, there are certain parameters and certain, uh, you know, certain ideas and, and, and philosophies that we believe that poverty can be abolished, but, you know, it, it, it takes a lot. So go to the next one. We'll kind of get to that in a minute. Uh, so then we're going to kind of get it, get into northern poverty a little bit more and what we call relative poverty. Loss of dignity, okay? Go ahead. Keep going. Low self-esteem, powerless, go ahead. The lack of, uh, you know, this lack of you know, participation in culture and politics, uh, discrimination. So that kind of gets into what we have to deal with as Americans. Um, one of the issues that I had going back to Ghana uh, me being a student, you know, I'm not, and I was at UCLA Film School at the time, and I was shooting a, a short film uh, called Warrior Queen um, in Ghana, and it was my thesis project. But as an American coming out there, they just assumed that I had money. They assumed that I was rich. They assumed that, you know, I, and, and it, was, it, was, it was disheartening to me because everywhere you went, I mean, everybody was hustling. You know, can I get this? Can I get this? They were thinking about the here and now, not the future, because they didn't believe I was coming back. You know, but I was there trying to hustle myself too and trying to get their help and make sure that we can actually do, you know, do a project together as a collaboration. But they felt like I was, you know, I was making them false promises. They, you know, I'm, 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 I'll be back, I promise you I'll be back, I promise you I'll be back. So they, they got tired of the promises. You know, so when I saw when I was there, I saw them smiling. I saw them walking down the roads with, you know, buckets of water on their head so that their, their grandparents can, these are little kids, so that their grandparents can bathe at night. I saw them really inspired by life. They love life, you know? And for me, they were, they were shocked to see, you know, and, 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 and even me having any issues of, of discrimination, of racism, of feeling powerless at times, you know, from my upbringing. They couldn't believe that I would actually go through that process and that, that, that my mindset was in that, 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 you know, that, on that level. They were extremely poor, but they were so happy. They rolled up their sleeves, went to work every day with a smile on their face. I had that same experience that that girl had. I had that same experience that, 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 that this young lady actually you know, you know, expressed to you guys early on that video. I was in tears my first day in Ghana. Every person on my crew came out there and there's nothing that I can compare it to. I can't sit here and talk about it and give you the, the actual feeling, the actual angst that everyone had. Every single person on my crew, they cried. They cried. We were at a resort one time, it was a beach front, and you know, one of my, my DP, he wanted to run over there and he wanted to kind of take a picture of the, the ocean view. You know, right next to like this, the, the slave castle, like all this history was going on. And he got over to that top and he looked down the bank, nothing but feet, I mean, it was like trash and people were taking dumps and, I mean, that was their, that was their restaurant. The ocean was their toilet. So that sense of poverty for me was like, whoa, it was a wake up call because who am I to complain? Who am I to say that I don't have it? And a wise man once said in my family, you know, poverty here isn't here. It's a state of mind. 
you know, and that's something that I want to kind of you know talk about too because playing devil's advocate, there are some that there are some that might not believe in hell. You know, why can't we complain? Why can't you know? Why can't we you know you know I guess you know have our voices heard? Why are we going to Africa? Why are we feeding those kids out there? Why are we doing for home? Why is Oprah building the school in, in South Africa? Why should not building the school in Congo? So these are these are debates that go on, but a lot of people kind of they, they're hush hush about it because they don't want to seem you know politically incorrect. You know, Africa is a cool thing. Africa is a thing. Africa is you know that, that's where the charity must go. Is charity the answer? So these are these are the basic these are questions that we're going to kind of talk about a little bit more. Southern poverty, absolute poverty, low income. Go ahead. Uh, you know, low calorie intake. You're getting into the nutrition now. You know, high infant mortality, life expectancy is low. Um, you know, illiterate rate. You know, they're, they're, you know the, the, the the literacy rate is extremely low. Go ahead. Uh, widespread disease, unemployment. Keep going. So you kind of get a sense of the differences. Okay. There's a level in the South that yes, we're we're impoverished because there's an elite group of people that own all the resources. In the North, you have that same thing, but you also have three other parameters. In the North, those countries are paying debts, international debts to the, you know, to the, to the actual southern countries, you know, these, you know, these, these Western you know, countries, okay? I mean, these, you know, the northern countries here. And they also have, you know, they're, they're being taxed heavily on their labor, okay? So they're paying you know, higher taxes. They're working so hard. And their resources are being privatized. Countries, you know, companies from the states are going to Ghana, are going to, you know, all these African states and taking the cocoa, taking the diamonds, taking all the resources, you know, refining them in their places and, and, and selling them back to them threefold. You know, and that's that's the idea of, you know, helping them. You know, they're not giving them the actual resource. There's there's documentaries, rings and rings of documentaries that I watched where when, you know, you, you had countries that came down and said, we're going to collaborate with you, you know, we're going to collaborate with your government and actually give you you know, we're going to bring jobs to your area. You know, those, those actual companies came in and destroyed the natural resources, destroyed everything in, the, you know, in those areas, and gave them nothing. Gave them nothing. <clears throat> to keep them off their, their ancestral land. So is that, you know, is, is, is this sense of collaboration the, the answer to kind of, you know, destroy this, this idea of poverty? Go ahead. So that gets us into the discussion. When you hear that, right, what is privileged poverty? What is privilege poverty? What is your definition? And what do you think of when I say that, you know, there's, there's actually a term out there called privilege poverty. What do you think? What is privilege poverty? And that's what we're going to kind of talk about now, okay? So what you're going to do is actually, uh, uh, Divine has an activity for you guys, so we can kind of get a little bit more into the idea of what privilege and poverty is. Right, so I didn't anticipate a lot of, All of you. So I might not have enough copies. Um, so if you can just just pass it, you, it's kind of something that you guys are going to um, write down. And if you if just pass it around, please. Um, and you can kind of answer the questions if you look on someone else's paper and then answer the question. Um, so I'm going to give you about ten minutes to do so. So you guys are just going to answer these questions. Honestly, um, and then uh, we're going to share. Um, can you guys share that? We have enough back there. Can you guys? Can you two share that one? Can you two share that one? You got one. Okay. Does everyone at least see it? You guys have one. Can you share. Extra. Oh, good. You guys all right? Yeah. Okay. I actually really want you to answer the questions. Um, just not, we're not, I want you to write them down um, to the best of your ability. So you got, so those who do not have one, you can write it on your, your uh, notebook if you did. And just, all right, as we're finishing up, um, uh, just like we did earlier, I'd like to start, uh, well first let me do some ground rules. Whatever we say in here, um, guys, I, I ask that you, I guess respect the person that is speaking and if they come, they come with an idea that you do not agree with, we ask you to attack the idea, not the person. Um, I also uh, like to tell you guys to lead into discomfort, which means to, if you are at any uh, moment, um, if you're feeling uncomfortable or feel some discomfort, just recognize it, you know, and even saying the phrase, you know, I'm a little uncomfortable with that. 
helps it out a lot. Um, so um, just those two rules, and just be comfortable with silence, because silence doesn't mean that some, you know, sometimes pe people get nervous with silence. With silence, it just means that people might be processing. Um, so don't get too uncomfortable with with uh, silence. Um, and that's about it. So everyone understands the rules, right? Or the ground rules? Can I hear yes? Yes. All right, cool. Thank you. All right, so popcorn. I love it. Mm -hmm. One word answer phrase. When we're thinking about privilege, poverty, when we're thinking about this activity, when we're thinking about the video, everything all at once, what, what's going through your brains? Just one word answers. Just give me one word answers. I'll start calling you in a second. It was nice of you volunteering. <laughs> one word answers. Perspective. Perspective. Oxymoron. Hold on to that one. <laughs> All right. Somebody ready to be called on? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Come on, y'all. Come on. Just give me the words in your brain. I don't want to be in like third grade or whatever. Come on. Awareness. Awareness. All right, cool. Who else? Relative. First first word that pops your brain. Reality. Reality. Relativity. Relativity. Give me some more. Yes. Inequality. Okay. <clears throat> Any phrases? Anything else? First things in your brain. Who wants to elaborate on the word before we move forward? Oxymoron. Well, that's when I look at this and say privilege, poverty. It, it they can go two words and they don't go together. Mm -hmm. Think of poverty. How can poverty is something that's that be privileged? Because it's something that's supposed to have be poverty. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure that out. Anybody else had that um, thought in their brain? Yeah. Like, how can you put those two words together? It's like conflict. Mm. So that's one of the reasons why we had you do your um, your uh, kind of a inventory. Anybody want to kind of go through there? Um, I guess in Je can I, I, I ask Jenny, Doctor Cisco, to go through first. I like I'll just put her. Yes, please. How about your first question? We'll, we'll do each question. So you'll you'll tackle the first question. Who's your first question? Uh, when when you were growing up, what was your family's source or sources of income? Okay. Um, primarily, from my understanding, it came directly just from salaries or wages. Okay. Probably salaries. Um, and my mom was a nurse, and my dad was a teacher, public school. Okay. So both parents were working. Uh -huh. So both parents were in the household. Yes. Okay. Anybody want to tackle question two? Yes, ma'am. Um, you said you're from the neighbors, mm -hmm. um, neighborhoods growing up. Um, we owned a townhouse and it had a yard. We were pretty close to the other townhouses around us, mm -hmm. and we moved to a um. Another house in New Jersey, like an actual house, mm -hmm. and that way we had um, like a backyard, and it was much more spacious than it was now. Mm -hmm. It was sort of safe. I don't know. Okay. Number three. Oh, I was gonna do two. So oh, okay. Go ahead. Elaborate. Go ahead. Um. Okay. Well, I mean, for me, um, I lived in Philadelphia. So when um when I was little, my parents owned a store on like Ninth Street. So um. I was with my grandma a lot, so she lived up a small street where like cars didn't really go. So like we always had like little kids that were always playing around. But then eventually my mom stopped working, so we just wound up staying home again. And um, I just remember we lived in like a row home, so there wasn't too much space, and we couldn't really go outside because we lived on a big street. And um, I remember like here and like being like, oh, do you guys just want to like go to my house because it's close enough? And then just being like no, like, I don't want to go to your house. And, like, I always felt like my neighborhood was, like, safe and that I was okay, but, what like, that for other people coming in, it was, like, What part of Philly was it? South, South Philly? Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> Anybody want to tackle another question? Yes, ma'am. I'll do number three. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, how does the education you are getting now compare with the education of others in your family and the generation and the previous generation? Um, I'm the only college-educated person in my family. Mm -hmm. How about four? Yes, ma'am. Um, how was your family and who did you have spent with your growing up? Uh, my family spent a lot of time.
time together. He had his big yard, so we always sort of playing outside, or if it was bad weather, we'd play inside, and we'd take a lot of vacations together. Mm -hmm. So compared to her stories, it's kind of different. Whereas you were on this huge street, and you could, where if you were playing, you were out in the middle of the street, mm -hmm. dodging cars. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Question four, and I'm going to tell you why I'm pointing those things out in a second. Question five, I think. We can skip around. We're going to have to do each question in the interest of time. Yes, go ahead. Um, I landscape for uh, four years. Okay. What's the question? Where, Where do you work? Where do you work? Okay. Landscape, four years. Okay. Six, seven, eight, nine. How about six, real quick? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> you have a stuff fund on, or on stocks and bonds? No. Okay. You ever think about doing that? Me? No. Yeah. Anyone ever talk to you about doing that? I mean, no. Okay. Do you know anyone close? Who's the closest person to you doing it? To you going to and talking about that too? For me, um, my my one of my aunts is well off. Okay. She's trying to be my person that we talk to about the situation. You talk to her often? Yeah. Okay. How about next question? Now tell me to read the question. I'm sorry. Uh, what you own? Okay. Your clothes, iPhone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Next. Mm -hmm. What do you owe? Lots of student loans. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next one. Just some of the values. Just start shouting out some of the values that you circle. Mm -hmm. How about that? You can just shout out some of the things you circle. Getting by. Getting by. Saving money. Yes. Getting a college degree. Getting a college degree. Saving money. Saving money. Going to a place of worship. Going to a place of worship. Open communication among family members. Open communication among family members. Helping others. Helping others. Um, not doing bad, but working hard. Okay, working hard. Staying out of trouble with the law. Staying out of trouble with the law. Not being wasteful. Not being wasteful? Yeah. Okay. Not being physically fit or athletic. Okay, and the question was, it says, let me see, circle five values or expectations from the list below that seem to be most valued in your family. Mm. <coughs> then underline five that seem the least important. Can someone give me some, what, so the ones we answered were the most important. Can we give some least important real quick? Yeah. Gaining social status. Keeping up with the neighbors. Keeping up with the Joneses, <laughs> the neighbors, yes. Physical appearance. Physical appearance. Learning a trade. Learning a trade. Recognition. Recognition. Yeah. Least important, yes. Being patriotic. Being patriotic. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Okay. Uh, ten. Question ten. Yeah. Um, it says, what do you appreciate or have you gained from your athletic background experience? Um, I put versatility, creativity, appreciation, adaptation, and compassion. Okay. Anybody else want to share theirs? Um, mom, be grateful for everything. Be grateful for everything. Um, I'm important to the family. Okay. How about the last couple questions? 11, really quick. Who wants to tackle? Go ahead, sir. So you're saying you grew up from what you thought was privilege and, yeah. and then you came here and seen everyone else or no, seen a like thing? It's seeing like it's like learning about like, you know, poverty. Oh, okay. So you came here and learned about poverty and then all of a sudden, okay. Okay. Wonderful. Last question. Last question. What impact does your class background have on your current attitudes? Behaviors and feelings about either of the ones. Yeah, go ahead. Um, in regards to? If you expect to work hard and you're more inclined to talk to them less. If you expect to work hard. If you work hard, then you're more inclined to work less. Oh, okay, we're well, gonna hold on to that thought. What else? Um, personally, a job for success. 
and um, wanted to promote um, awareness. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. So, how many people honestly in this classroom or in this room feel guilty? Does anyone have any feel any feelings of guilt? Okay. Thank you for being honest. Anybody want to share why you feel guilty? Um, well, when we were growing up, um, we were well off, but most of the money went to putting the kids in private school. So when I was only just scared by the fact that I had no idea what it was to ever bring that test. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was privileged enough just to be at that school, but that just doesn't matter. I mean, I've grown to realize that, but it still makes me feel guilty. Anybody else? Um, like two summers ago, I spent about four weeks doing a bunch of work in the Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. and then coming home and seeing um, kind of what the reaction was on the, with the movie. Uh, coming back home and seeing uh, something as simple as like a shower and uh, having warm food in front of you, mm -hmm. it, it just made me feel bad of how much uh, how much I take for granted. Okay. Anybody else? Let's talk about feeling guilty. Why do you think? I was talking to my mom on the phone the other day, and my dad actually just got a job for us. She's like, he started out um, very working class. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about how she was laughing how he's been coming and calling about whether to return a shirt because that underwear is just being sent off. And I was thinking about how shocked he would be not to think about it, mm -hmm. where he's so careful. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Um, both my parents worked when I was younger, but we had enough money for everything, and more than that, I mean, we lived in a similar neighborhood to Villanova here, and so I haven't had to work so hard for what I want as, like, I haven't had to work for my own income. Like, I had my parents to do that for me, and I haven't had to go through hardships of poverty or any thing like that and so you know it makes mm -hmm. me feel guilty that I'm so privileged and I haven't done anything really to deserve that. And, and this, um, thank you for that. Um, thank you for sharing. Thank you for answering questions. Thank you for sharing your experiences. This particular uh, <coughs> workshop was created not to make you feel guilty. We didn't, myself and Heather didn't put this together to say all right let's get, let's get them together, make them feel guilty about poverty have them do something about it. That's not what it was. No. This was to actually find the answer to what is pri what is uh, privileged poverty or what is or who is the color of poverty. Because so many of us think it's this, but it might be this and this and this and this. There's so many colors. Um, who is it? It's kind of a rhetorical question you think about. Hmm, what is the color? Who is the color? How is the color? You know, all those those words you can throw in there. But this right here, this, this um, activity, it's kind of, it, it, we want you to think about your own experiences and think about who, where, we want you to explore like you did. Want, we want you guys to look at how your life was, like, okay, and then do something about it actually. And then, not to make you feel guilty, but to see the connection of where you are and where everyone else is, or the gap to where you are and where everyone else is. So given all this, is there such thing, is there a such thing as privileged poverty? What are your thoughts on privileged poverty? I can give you a, a kind of my first out of the US experience. I went to do a mission trip in Jamaica, um, the uh, Kingston, Jamaica, the worst part of Jamaica. It was the first time I was out of the country. Um, I got out there, and it's kind of similar to what he was talking about when he was in Ghana. We stayed in a, um, a, a, a nun's house. And it was kind of on the hill, and you know we we're having fun playing soccer or football with the um, with the uh, locals, I guess. Um, and when it was all said and done, we're over. We we went up to this gate behind the uh, house, and we went to the house. We noticed that we were on top of everything. You looked down, and it was like, oh wow, who lives down there? And that was you. That was all the people who couldn't afford to live in a house um, or live in the actual building. They were living in like um, I guess you could say huts. Um, um, and it was like all the way down, and I felt so 
bed because I'm like, well, who am I to be way up here in the bed? Um, it wasn't a comfortable bed, but it was a bed, you know. Um, I had water. They had a stream. And I had towels and, and, and sheets and all that. I found out that they didn't have all that, or some of them didn't have that. So I was like, well, who am I to stay in this up here? You know, coming as a visitor, I can come, but these people down here live every day. I vowed to myself to, people ask me to go to, you know, weddings in Jamaica. I'm like, you know, I don't think I can do that. Because I can't go to weddings in Jamaica and have a good time and not think about the people that are working hard to provide those things for everyone else. Now, again, that's, that's just me. It's my own personal thing. I'm not saying you guys have to have that or anyone else has to have, has to have that. But it, that story uh, kind of connects with, po uh, I keep saying it backwards, privileged poverty and the color of poverty and who it is and what it is. I don't know. So what, what do you guys, throw some, throw some new <coughs> images out there. What do you think it is? Is there an actual meaning? Is it still oxymoronic or is it true? Looking at how there's uh, uh, first world versus third world, looking at northern versus southern poverty. Is there is there privileged poverty? Is there a sense? Do you think? How many be, how many people agree that there is privileged poverty? Can someone elaborate? Why? Can you? In fact, why do you agree? Yeah. Um, I mean, in the United States, we have a higher standard of living, mm -hmm. and comparatively, someone on at the lower end would be a lot higher than someone in a different country. And um, most people in this country can provide uh, basic means for themselves, whereas in the case of absolute poverty, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Somebody else had their hand up? Yes, sir. Uh, well, I feel like, similar to what he said, privileged poverty in the United States, I mean, we have homeless shelters, welfare, things like that, that can help the people who are in poverty, whereas compared to absolute poverty in Haiti or Ghana, they have nothing. Like, only what they can try and find and provide for themselves. Somebody else? Yes. I have a question about, mm -hmm. <coughs> like, I'm feeling um, conflicted about privileged poverty and, and its contradictory nature. Basically, based on what Stacy just said, right, that we do have these resources, but I wonder here, in the U.S. for people experiencing poverty, homelessness, et cetera, more so than in the third world. Um, in fact, uh, I had a student from West Africa who was just saying to me, like, there's no aid for people who are homeless in his village, for example, compared to here where we're learning about the shelters, et cetera. Um, but I wonder if it's problematic for us to think about privileged poverty and to categorize it as such if it then undermines, um, it, it places value or weight on what, mm -hmm. what we should care about. Like, for instance, then we should all go to the third world and not mm -hmm. care about the people that we pass by in our cities who are sleeping on the streets, um, who don't have the, the, the capability of helping themselves or whatnot. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Know. Yeah, I mean, and that question is not just for me. Right. This is kind of an interactive discussion, dialogue type thing, so I'll just, Come on, you guys are alongside. I mean, are we good. rating? Are we ranking right. poverty, yeah, right? And awesome. whether or not we should help. Mm -hmm. So again, what is the <coughs> color of poverty? Go ahead. Well, I'm having a similar issues. conflict when you think about where we sit in sort of a post-industrial knowledge economy. We can talk about working hard all we want, but the Ghanaians and the Jamaicans, they still don't have the transition to sort of a knowledge-based economy like we do. So the opportunities that you need to take advantage of, at least in my opinion, to be a hardworking and successful individual in like this post-industrial economy are much uh, harder to uh, gain access to mm -hmm. for those in need and, and lower on the rung. And I mean, we talk about North versus South, go to North Philly. You don't have to go to the Northern Hemisphere. I mean, you know, you can see some serious uh, uh, lack of basic help and, and, and if they don't go to school, they can't participate in that knowledge economy. They can't be part of this new sort of industry that we've kind of decided that's where we're going. We're not gonna produce cotton shirts anymore. Maybe you could go into work in a factory 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Not the deal anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
question. I'm just listening. Oh, okay. Anybody else? I mean, what do you think of in, in regards to our question? It's, it's conflicting. Are we putting value on what we should care and care about? Should we not care about here and think about the third world, third world stuff? You know. And we can't separate ourselves from the fact that we're uh, citizens, the majority of us, I mm -hmm. can't speak for everyone, citizens of the North, right? I right. mean, we're, you know, of one of the wealthiest countries um, in the world, but the wealthiest. So when we're asking those questions, you know, I mean, that's very much a part of mm -hmm. who we are. Mm -hmm. So I also oppose this. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think as, I think as an American, um, we're all privileged, whether you live on Skid Row, North Philly, Scarsdale, wherever you're from, because I think Oprah had it right. You know, she asked kids in Chicago, what do you want for Christmas? They wanted iPods, Game Boys, all those things. She asked the kids in South Africa, what do they want for Christmas? They just wanted education. It's a big difference. Like, I would give education over an iPod any day. Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't think the kids in Chicago deserve to have those things. It's like, what's more important? I think that's where the idea of, and I believe we're going to get into it, but the idea of um, the image that we have of poverty and the difference between charity and solidarity. Um, what, is, what, what is it? Um, yes, we are privileged, and like he said, and should we put value on things? Maybe we should, maybe we should, but that's where the idea of charity, it, it be, should be beginning with charity, but ending in solidarity. Yes, we have all these things. Yes, we're privileged to have both parents in a home and both people working with good jobs. Um, uh, everyone in this, the North, is, has the things that we need. Even the lesser person has more than, the, um, for lack of a better phrase, the, the most impoverished person here on our continent is probably more well off than someone else. Probably, I'm not sure. But um, the connection we have, we have it here. We have, we use what we have, take care of our home, and then what? Do we just stop there? And that's where the idea of what the image of poverty is. I don't know if you want to. Oh, somebody else had it. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So, um, I was just gonna say that I think, I feel like one of the things we forget as Americans when we, is when we think of things like poverty is we've caused some of the poverty in the third world. And we may think of it as charity, but in some other mm -hmm. regards, it's something that we owe to mm -hmm. the people like, we've been talking in one of my classes about Haiti, and we're one of the reasons that Haiti has so many problems pre-earthquake even. Mm -hmm. So we may say that we're going in and giving them charity, but we're the reasons they need the charity mm -hmm. in some regard. Mm -hmm. so. Um, but I think that's another, um, something interesting to think about is the whole idea of charity. Um, and I learned that, like she said, just me personally, charity is not enough. When you say charity, you're kind of separating yourself from the people that you're supposedly giving the charity to. So it's like a us and a them. Mm -hmm. it, it shouldn't be that. It should be a, a mutual relationship, a mutual understanding that we are a part of this people or this culture, or like she said, we're in some way related to this people. So it's not about giving charity, but more about how the connection that you make with these people and how you try to eliminate the, the bigger problem and promote social justice as opposed to just giving, 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 but never connecting. Do you think that, um, so, so do you think that it should start somewhere though? Um, should it start at, uh, some level, and then move to solidarity, or you think it should just happen right at solidarity, or does it happen like that? Oh, no, 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 For no, everybody. no. Solidarity, yeah. it takes time. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is a process. And even, I'm not saying charity is bad, because charity is not bad, because people do need resources, but it shouldn't stop at charity. Right. If it starts there, it, it should be that plus whatever. Mm -hmm. So you should, even if you want to give charity, you should at the same time be working for solidarity, not, mm -hmm. you have to have a, a, a balance. Connected. Mm -hmm. Can I, can I, if, is it charity if we create a problem? Is it charity if like we create Are you, like she talked about, you if you take, create a if problem, you create the problem and you know, further, later on in life, you're like, oh my God, in your mind, I really created this problem. I need to show people that I'm giving back. I'm not being charitable, I'm just feeling guilty. Like, and like for you, where are you from originally? Yeah. Uh, New Jersey. I can't hear, I'm sorry. New Jersey? Like, I almost felt like, um, 
I must have a little bit of pain in your heart when you're talking. You can't help where you're from and that you've been privileged all your life. You can't help that. You can't change that. That is who you are. And embrace it, you know? And just hopefully in the future you just be charitable. That's a good example. And help someone out. You know what I mean? That's, I think that's a great way to explain charity. And in that, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say something. Another thing that changes the dynamic of, let's say, charity is the 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 reasons behind why you give. Your attitude about giving and why you give and how you give it, it changes the dynamic. Like it, it, it's relative, so you can't say charity. But I'm just stressing the fact that you can't just give, give, give without. You can be like, oh, these people are poor, let me give it to them without looking at the bigger picture. Right. Why are these people poor? What is the bigger social What's issue key, behind yeah. this? Because, you know what I'm saying? I'm giving money, but, okay, and then this is cliche, you give, a man a, give a man a fish and eat for a day, teach mm-hmm. him in a fish for, 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 for a lifetime. So it, it, it's like overall. It's like I, agree. I agree very much because like, no matter how much you give, it won't change the systems that encourage this poverty. Exactly. Things should go beyond charity. It should really be more about the face-to-face service, and they should give from the heart and not from you know. And on, uh, and this will be my last before you go. Yeah, we got we got to kind of wrap it up. Yeah, sorry. we could be here all day talking. Uh, about but <laughs> on that on that note of changing the system, that's exactly where like we and not mean to point you out, you know. Um, but for those, I didn't think I was privileged being uh, my social identity groups would be, be me being black. I'm thinking I'm a part of the um, oppressive group, target groups. We can go into that later, the target and Asian group. The Asian groups are those that are more privileged. Target groups are the underrepresented, those groups that are more oppressed. Um, so me being um, a person of color, I'm more prone to be oppressed than the person of non-color. So I'm thinking because of that, I am um, a target group. But I realized that, I didn't think I was privileged like that, but I realized I am privileged because I'm a man, I'm from the US, I'm a Christian, and I have access to education, which takes me from the low, um, Middle to lower class to kind of middle class because I have access to wealth and all the other stuff because I have education. So now, what do I do? Should I, should I feel bad or should I wallow and feel guilty? Like, oh, I'm privileged. What do I do? No, we don't want to do that. Now, how can I use those privileges to then create solidarity uh, opportunities? And that's what we're trying to do so we can create a brand new color of poverty or so we can kind of ch- ch- change that term from privileged poverty to something else. And so, I guess for those, that's what this activity was for. For you guys to understand where you are, learn where you are and where you stand, so you can then use it to change lives and make connections um, in regards to everything else. Uh, just real fast, kind of rapid fire to kind of wrap it up a little bit. But um, I mean, I love you know everybody, you know all the discussions we've been having today, and, and something that you know I want you to think about are the privileges that you know that we do have here, and how we also abuse that you know sometimes. And I have family members that are on public assistance that would do the bare minimum to just to keep that public assistance yeah. going. Mm-hmm. So those are those that just playing a little bit of you know, devil's advocate. There are people that take advantage and abuse the privileges that they do have here to kind of, you know, to kind of combat the poverty that are in the state. So kind of think about that on, on your way out. Um, you know, and you talk about elimination and, uh, you know, and, and it's that discrimination of, of poverty. Kind of think about what do we have to do to actually, we was gonna have a little discussion, you know, a little you know, discussion about that we don't have the time, but here are some solutions that I came up with. Uh, justice, not charity, okay? Not charity. Charity is great, like she said, you know, but it's more than that, just like you said. But the justice part is we're talking about, you know, you know, you know, for, you know just forgive the international debt to the, you know, all these kind of southern countries. Uh, you know, change the tax system globally. Uh, land, you know, reformation, giving the land back to the people that truly own that land. Um, and, you know, in privatization of natural resources. Go ahead. You know, you know improve the agriculture. You know, improve basic health, education, uh, improve living conditions. You know, these are extremely, you know, utopia ideas, but they don't need to be. But these are the steps that need to be taken in order for poverty to be abolished. Go ahead. Um, is poverty a state of mind? We kind of talked about that a little bit. And when we get into privileged poverty, there's also other systems of poverty and ideas of poverty too. Bodily poverty, mental poverty, cultural poverty, spiritual poverty. These, pop, these, these mindsets in your mind, it, it, it forces you to kind of isolate. It forces you not to really care. And it's not that, you know, you don't have to be poor to be mentally, you know, uh, to be spiritually, you know, poor or, po- in, in, you know, spiritually poverty. You don't have to be poor. You don't have to be in a third world country to have those, those definitions of poverty. Everyone in this room might deal with one of these ideas. Mm-hmm. 
you know, we're all privileged, yes. But this is, the, this is also part of that definition of poverty. Because what this does, it, 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 it makes you kind of isolate. It makes you step away from, you know, from the real problem, from the true problem. It makes you, you know, not vote. It makes you hold, you know, hold your pockets tight. It makes you care about self. It makes you more selfish. It makes you not, you know, you don't really trust people. So that, that sense of poverty, not just the, you know, the, the stereotypical what we hear and what we kind of see and you put a blanket you know, term to it, it's very complex. And if you get anything out of this, this, this you know, discussion today, is understanding the different levels of poverty. You know, it's not so you know, black and white. You know, there's a lot of different definitions, a lot of different levels to it, a lot of colors, a lot of tones, I like to call it in filmmaking. So that's what's so cool about the, the concept of privileged poverty. It does kind of get you to think in contradictions, those oxymorons and things like that, but it really gets you to think about what that truly means. So it's still, you know, a process. It's still a development, and this is something that I personally am going to tackle in the projects that, you know, that I'm, that I'm getting involved with. And this is one of the, the themes that we're going to deal with with the uh, Haitian project um, for my social justice documentary class. Just a little plug, anybody that's interested in the documentary, uh, definitely look out for it at the Golden Oven and, and things like that and, and talking to your, your, um, your actual advisors. But we, we'll be having interviews for that class. We're looking for about 10 more students to actually join us on our crusade to talk about privilege. Thank you for your Thank time. You guys.